Hello, it's about, it's 5.30 on Friday evening. I'm here in Washington, D.C. Uh, traffic is in full swing, it looks like. It's pretty overcast. Uh, we got here at like 6.45 or something this morning. Uh, we took the red eye from Sacramento to to San Francisco and then San Francisco to, but uh, and then San Francisco to Dulles, D.C. Um, and we came to our hotel pretty much straight away, but we couldn't check in until one. So we managed to catch the last like 10 minutes of uh, their breakfast buffet. So we were able to eat there and then um, kind of get our bearings and figure out what we were gonna do. We went to the National History Museum and the Some sort of art museum. I actually can't remember what it was. We saw some Monet's. We saw the only, the only Leonardo da Vinci painting, I guess, that is located outside of the United or outside of um, Europe, I guess. Um, so that was pretty cool. And we walked a lot. I have over fourteen thousand steps already today. The only time we took any transportation was we took from the airport. We took a bus and then the metro uh, to uh, down the street from our hotel. And otherwise, other than that, we walked over to the Capitol Mall, all around the Capitol Mall, anywhere we were going. So I just woke up from like a three hour nap, I think. Um, not completely slept straight, straight through, but pretty much. Uh, we were exhausted, could not get comfortable on the plane, and I didn't feel like I slept more than like two minutes at a time. I watched the movie The Favorite on the plane, which was... I really enjoyed it, but it definitely wasn't, um, I love the comedy in it, but it definitely wasn't uh, as lighthearted as a, of a story as I thought it, would, it was going to be. And then it ended and I was like, the, is that the ending? So um, then I went to sleep after that, um, restlessly. So, so anyway, um, the only, because it was a red eye, the only reading I did was in the can't talk. The only reading I did was in the airport, I keep trying to say library, in the airport uh, while I was waiting for my friend to get there. So I read another couple chapters in Barchester Towers. And then I read just a little bit as I was trying to settle down and, and take a nap. I would love to be able to get to a bookstore while I'm here. It's certainly not the high priority, but um, you know, definitely if I, if I can find one, I would like to go. We plan to go to Georgetown tomorrow. Um, so some of the planning we were doing with the concierge yesterday, we have to go to packet pickup. There's a, uh, an expo where you pick up your packet for the marathon and then there's all sorts of like vendors and everything. You get a bunch of free swag and um, stuff like that. And then, um, and so we're gonna take, we're gonna take the Metro to get to the area where that is. And then the area where that is, is near where we can get on a boat and go around up the river, up the Potomac to Georgetown. So I think we're gonna go that route at least to get there and then probably take the Metro back a, a different route. So yeah, we're gonna do that. And then, um, and my friend's husband will be here with us tomorrow. I haven't talked to my friend since I woke up. She might be still be, be napping as well. I think actually I might get cleaned up a little bit and then go downstairs. There's a pretty nice, just kind of loungy hangout area. And then um, I would love to get some coffee and probably just read down there. And eventually tonight, it's the, you know, we're in Washington, D.C. and the Washington Nationals are in the World Series and the franchise has never won. And I have no reason not to root for them and we're here. So I've been rooting for them. They're up 3-0. So if they win tonight, then they will win the World Series in a sweep. It's a best of seven. So um, even if they don't win tonight, they can still win the World Series. But everybody at the hotel is super psyched.
Well, it's Marathon Eve. It is Saturday evening. It's just about eight o'clock and I am back in my hotel room. We had quite a busy day. I did about a two mile run this morning. I basically ran straight to the Lincoln Memorial from our hotel. Uh, looked around there, looked at the, the World War II Memorial and the Korean War Memorial. Somehow I ended up missing the Vietnam War Memorial. I might be able to go check it out on Monday. I ended up um, did one of those little scooter thingies that you uh, that you rent pick up all over the place and uh, to rest my legs and came back to the hotel before we went off on our adventures for the day. So we took a water taxi first to Alexandria and we had about 40 minutes to hang out there and I managed to find of course uh, a little bookstore there. This was Old Town Books and I picked up a cute little tote bag there to support independent bookstores and it's a really great way to get a souvenir that's something that's useful and you know it doesn't say like Alexandria Virginia on or anything like that uh, but I'll remember where where I got that and while I was there I picked up Hollow Kingdom which is a, a book I have been interested in by Kira Jane Buxton so happy to get to explore and support a small independent bookstore we also went to Oh, before that, that's where we went. I was trying to figure out what did we do today? We went to the Marine Corps Marathon Expo and that's where you pick up your, your bib, the actual numbers that go on your shirt and your, uh, your race shirt. And um, there's all sorts of vendors there, um, you know, selling their stuff and giving out free samples of things and what have you. I noticed the Injured Marine Semper Fi Fund uh, booth set up and I went over there and I was talking to them and they had some apparel and everything that they were selling. And I started talking to the lady and I was like, oh, how much is the, how much is the red women's shirt? $30. I'm like, uh, you know, I was spending a lot of money on things and I'm like, no, uh, I'm not going to buy it. But I, uh, I was saying, you know, do you work for the organization? And she said, yes. And I said, oh, I just want to thank you very much for, you know, what your organization does. Um, I've actually been a recipient of a lot of their, of their charity. They paid for a lot of the flights when Sam was, was here in the DC area, um, in the hospital, we were here for seven weeks and um, they were one of the charities that paid for um, 27 in all, I think, that counted uh, flights from California to um, Bethesda, Maryland. One of them was from Mississippi to Maryland. And um, and then the, the Injured Marine Semper Fi Fund has helped me in several other ways with um, cash grants for certain things, things that have come up in life. And so really, really appreciated of them. And the lady ended up giving me the shirt that I had asked about. So she gave me a $30 shirt for free, um, which, was, which was very kind and very much appreciated. Then after the expo, that's when we went, um, took the metro to where we needed to get onto the water taxi, and then took the water taxi for, from there to Alexandria, explored on Alexandria, and then we went on to Georgetown, which is a cute little town, and there we went to Lulu, Lululemon, and I was looking around, and I had a couple things in mind that I wanted, um, a shirt and a long sleeve shirt, and we were talking to the folks there, and we had our, you know, we had like Marine Corps Marathon gear on, and Lulu gear on, and everything, we were talking, and, um, you know, they found out this, I'm going to be running my third marathon, and I was talking to this lady, and, and telling her, she was, she was asking, you know, are you a Marine or is your husband a Marine? So I told him about my husband being injured in 2007. And the last time I was in the DC area, he was in a coma and um, we, were, we were here uh, for his injury. And she ended up gifting me one of the shirts that I bought. And then I also, because I'm a health coach, I have like a, like a research and development discount that I get. And so I ended up getting mega mega discount on uh, my purchases there so again very appreciative um, of that of that act of kindness there so I am now back to my room I'm sitting in bed I am going to peruse the um, salute the official program of the Marine Corps Marathon um, look up anything that I'm going to need to know for tomorrow the World Series has just started um, so I'm going to have that on in the background and then hopefully um, I will be able to settle down and read a bit of Barchester Towers. I've only been able to read this in like, you know, a page, three pages at a time so far because we've just been so busy. But um, I would like to do that to um, kind of settle myself down for the evening so I can get a good night's sleep before the marathon. I'll check in with you tomorrow. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
just about 9.30. It is the day after the marathon and I did not do a kind of a post-race update because I was just so beat. So it was a wet, wet, wild marathon. We've been here, this is the fourth day that we've been here. We arrived on Thursday, beautiful, sunny weather, warm, but not too hot, except for yesterday. So yesterday was both wet and hot. So it was drizzling and then straight up pouring as we were making our way to the start. We got off uh, the Metro at the Pentagon and then we went into the Pentagon and we had to walk a good ways to where kind of the start area was gonna be. We had like all our bags had to be checked by Marines to make sure we weren't bringing anything uh, into the Pentagon. Um, we were on the grounds, not in the building of the Pentagon, but it, the building was right there. Um, and then, so it was just drizzling and wet the whole time. We had like uh, those like plastic, um, just kind of disposable plastic ponchos on, um, but we were still soaking wet and uh, there was a lot of time on our feet before we even got to the start. Anyway, then, it had, it stopped raining right before we started and I took off my plastic and I probably wouldn't have run in it anyway. And, um, and then it started raining again. And so it was kind of drizzling and then by the time I was between miles like five and six, I think, it started pouring just like sheets totally drenched i was listening to i had my like my bose earbud in i was listening to prisoner of azkaban and then all of a sudden the sound started kind of cutting out like uh oh i gotta take this out put it in my pocket and i was really afraid i was so wet i was afraid that my phone was going to get messed up and normally i'd put it into a little zip top bag to keep it protected but i forgot um so anyhow, so only if the first maybe six miles or so was I listening to Prisoner of Azkaban. The rest of the time I listened to, to nothing but the environment, um, which, was, which was good. I think that actually is probably better, particularly for kind of a destination marathon where so much of it is, is sightseeing and all. Just, it was so wet. Like I had, at one point I had to stop because I had gone through so many big puddles that I had like tree debris in my shoes and so I could start to feel it rubbing. And so I had to stop and sit on like a, a median divider and um, take off my shoes and get the tree crud out of my shoes so I didn't get blisters from them. And then 
Um, when I was around mile 17 or so, I was just coming up to kind of um, the, the Capitol Mall area where I would have been pretty much right in front of the Washington, no, I would have been pretty much right in front of the uh, World War II Memorial, so the Lincoln, Lincoln is to my left and the um, Washington Memorial, no, yeah. The Capitol is to my right and uh, the Washington Monument is to my left. And that was when the sun came out and all the spectators were super happy and were like, yay, the sun came out. And they keep cheering to us. We're like, at least it stopped raining. Oh, the sun is out. Well, it was much better for the spectators than for us because it was a warm sun. So it was like mid 70s, plus just all the humidity. We are all soaking wet. The ground is wet. And so it was just, it was hot and it was like an intense sun. We were actually hoping that it would rain again because it was, it was so warm. At one point even around mile 20, one, twenty-two. I want to say I had already passed this point, so it was, you kind of make loops, and so I could see the runners going where I had already been, and now I was coming around and passing them. And the fire department actually had was spraying, so people could run through, uh, run through the water because it was it was just so hot. But I continued on, and I'm bon by no means fast. I actually kind of purposely run slow these days because. Um, when I was running faster, I was just injured all the time. And so um, certainly it takes a lot longer when you run slow, but uh, my body seems to appreciate that uh, much better. So I ended up finishing right around like, I didn't, haven't seen my official time, but according to my, my Garmin, it was 5.55. Um, so uh, that's fine. It's my slowest marathon, but it's, my goal was to finish this marathon to get to, you know, experience kind of the sight seeing aspect of it, um, which was amazing. I mean, you're running down, sightseeing in Washington, D.C. is really cool. But then when the streets are blocked off and you're getting just to run or walk down the middle of the streets and be up close to everything without um, traffic and, you know, busy sidewalks and everything, you know, there's people lined up to see you, cheering you on, which was, that's just a great feeling. Um, if you've never run in even a 5K, do a 5K, even if you walk it. Having people you don't know cheering you on is an amazing feeling. And also, runners are nice people. People who come to support runners are very nice people. And so if you're, I recommend to everyone, whether you volunteer at a race, um, go support somebody you know who's doing a race, um, or you actually participated in, in uh, or you participated in it yourself, it is such a great feeling of just like, this is like the, the, the best, kindest of humanity getting together. And oftentimes, especially when it's for a particular cause, and you know, whether it's a breast cancer walk or you know, pediatric cancer or something, or in this case, it was really about celebrating um, our Marines and all, all troops, um, especially those um, who have been killed in action or who have taken their lives uh, due to their struggle with PTSD. And, you know, there's so many people running with, with shirts that have, you know, someone's specific name, you know, my brother, KIA, Iraq, 2005, whatever. Um, that was just really special. And just seeing how many people are affected by uh, the war and in some of them there was a guy that I was running with we were kind of around the same pace and so I kept seeing him and he was running to celebrate his dad who was killed in World War II at Iwo Jima so it was all all war is anyone touched by any war um, or PTSD and then there were 2,000 Marines all along the course um, so every now and then you'd come up to uh, a group of Marines and some of them were just super motivating and they're just, you know, barking at you, but, but saying, uh, you know, really uh, motivating, mating things like, come on, you can do this. You got this. Dig. It was so great. And then there um, were usually Marines like right at the mile markers. So I got a few pictures later on in the race, uh, like selfies with a Marine and with the, the mileage posted behind us. And ah, it was just super fun. 
Um, the worst part was the way that the race ends, the way you have to be like corralled out, the major bottleneck. First of all, we finished at the statue of Iwo Jima, the, the Iwo Jima Memorial, where you have the, the Marines, and I think there's one corpsman holding up the flag, that iconic, actually that's what this logo represents. Like these are the Marines and the corpsman and then the flag. So that's what the Marine Corps, Marine Corps Marathon logo is, is looking at. So my feet were super sore, especially like the instep of my feet was really sore all day for the rest of the day yesterday. And I had one blister um, on a toe that was definitely affecting my, my walking. But today I feel pretty good. My feet feel good. My glutes and my, um, my quads and inner thighs are sore, but not like in a disabling way. I'm like, I'm actually walking normally today. It's just kind of like standing up and sitting down. That's the only time you would notice that like, uh, oh, she looks a little sore. So anyhow, that was a long spiel. Oh, we also took a night tour last night of um, kind of the monuments and the Capitol building. So we went, we got picked up at just before seven o'clock. So we'd had some time to like eat and rest and everything. Didn't actually get a nap, but um, we got picked up for this night. It was a really nice tour bus. You know, we were inside. It wasn't like it opened to the air and um, we had a, a driver and then a tour guide. And so the tour guide is, you know, telling us about things, um, about the city, about, you know, things that we were passing as we were passing them. And then we went to, we were actually supposed to go to the White House and we, we went to the White House, but we couldn't get into the actual park where it is because the president was going to the World Series game right as we were getting there. So they had it all um, blocked off so you couldn't enter. There's literally caution tape around the whole perimeter. And then um, you could see, we could actually see, um, we were so far away. Maybe if you had binoculars, you would probably be able to identify that's the president, but we could see him actually coming out with like the secret service and getting into his vehicle. Um, and then um, later on, by the time we finished our tour, we saw there was a street blocked off and our, our driver was telling us um, you know, all these police cars and everything that street blocked off, it's because the president is coming back from the baseball game. So it was kind of neat just to see how um, the movements of the president affect the accessibility to, to tourists and, um, and then how it affects like road closures in, in the city that people who live there have to deal with every day. So that, that was pretty interesting. But we had a really great tour uh, getting to see, I had seen the monuments during the day but getting to see it at night all lit up was just really, particularly I think Lincoln, it really, Lincoln and the World War II monument, it, it was, um, had much more impact I think um, at night with the lights on, they're just like glowing. The World War II mon monument has these fountains and then the lights in the fountains. And then um, when I first went through, I missed the Vietnam Memorial. I saw Korea and the Korean War Memorial just is super impactful, just, the memorial itself. For me, the Vietnam Memorial, there's a statue of three um, Marines, which is a great statue, but the real impact of the Vietnam War Memorial is this curved, long wall that is just filled with names. And just seeing how many names there were, and you know, each of these um, pieces of the wall are about 10 feet, probably, and it's pretty small type and it's just each one of those is covered and then there's I don't even know how many go down this wall and so just seeing the vast number of men and some women who were killed in that war and many of whom are still missing uh, was that was more impactful than any like statue could actually be so um, I have about two hours before I need to be downstairs ready to go. So I think I'm gonna watch some booktube while I pack up my stuff. I've just got kind of like a mess all around the room, so I need to repack. And of course, I bought stuff while I was here. So I've got Marine Corps Marathon goodies. I got a couple things from Lulu while we were in um, Georgetown. So yeah, so I need to get on with that and stop blubbing around here. So, but hopefully our flight leaves at like 5.30, I think, five something. And we're, we're time traveling. We're going from the East Coast to the West Coast, so we're, we're gaining time. So this, you know, the sun should be out for most of our flight. 
So I'm hoping I actually will get to read. So I really want to read The Warden. I also picked up Hollow Kingdom when we were in Alexand and Alexandria the other day. So those are kind of my two possibilities. And this is the whole time I've here, been here. I've been trying to read The Warden, but I'm literally, I've maybe read five pages <laughs> since I left uh, since I left Sacramento. So I uh, just haven't, I've been so busy just doing fun things that I haven't had much time to just like chill out and read. So um, hopefully I'll be able to do that on the plane. It is 9.15 on Monday night, and I am updating you from the La Quinta Inn and Suites in Baltimore, Maryland. Not at home, little bit of a change of plans. It turns out that a flight attendant not showing up for work is a really big deal. So uh, my friends and I, so husband and wife couple is who I'm traveling with, and we managed to get the husband on a flight tonight. He's like, he's in the air now to San Francisco. He's rented a car and he's gonna drive from San Francisco to Sacramento, which is about 100 miles, run an hour and a half long. Um, managed to get home and get maybe like four hours of sleep before he has to go to work in the morning. And then my friend and I, his wife and I, are staying here in Baltimore on United's dime and then we'll fly out on the first flight tomorrow morning at like 6.30, something like that. So we'll, we'll be back in Sacramento at 11, something tomorrow morning. Um, I'm pretty just kind of worn out for the day. And um, as much as I wanna get into, I'm into Barchester Towers, it just takes a little bit more concentration. And I think I might actually start Hollow Kingdom instead. I read like the first like page or two um, when I first got it, but I haven't technically, I haven't really started it yet. So I might try to read a little bit of this. Otherwise I'll probably just watch some booktube. And uh, otherwise I, I'm feeling pretty good. We did some, um, we did a couple Smithsonian museums today. Um, and then there's lots of stairs and going upstairs, like the first one, two, three steps going upstairs, quite sore, particularly in my left quad, I'm feeling more than anything. And so I would feel that, but then once I started going upstairs, it felt fine. It's going down that is killing me. So I imagine by tomorrow, actually, that will probably feel pretty good. I might try to, I have my foam roller with me in my hotel, so I might try to roll that a little bit before I go to bed. I put on a YouTube video and basically roll for, roll and stretch for the duration of that video, and then um, read a little bit and go to bed. So hopefully the next update will be actually from home.